Welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight we are going to be talking about investing with an impact. We're talking impact investing. But what specifically are we going to be talking about on the show? I signed up for an exceptional dining experience with Awatara, infusing soulful Indian food with culinary art. Yeah, and right here in this studio, we've got talented performers, the Gems Trio, joining us right here. Uh, but today, it is all about impact investment, and we had a bit of a chat before we went live tonight. Uh, impact investment, we're gonna be educated, I think, this evening, aren't we, Paris? We're gonna try, we're gonna <laughs> we're try gonna, our hardest. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Amy, you actually realized after finding out what impact investment is that you yourself are an impact investor. Yeah, I mean, I literally, I've never even heard this term before, <laughs> but yeah, I worked on a project uh, in Leeds where they were creating cheaper housing for homeless people as part of the project. So mm. that is actually impact investing. So I invested on You're that project. You're just a very good person, aren't you, Amy? I try to be, you know, I've got to make up for all my sins, haven't I, you know? <laughs> you hide it very well. But no, actually I realized the same thing because mm. I didn't, no, I never heard that term, impact investing. Yeah. But I really do believe in impossible meat. So I have invested in impossible meat. Not a huge amount of money, but I believe in it. And uh, yeah, that's what I've done. Yeah, you know what impossible meat is? <laughs> it's, it's vegan meat. It's, it's vegan, vegan meat. meat. It tastes exactly like meat, but it's no no animals are harmed. It's them. basically what I eat and you okay. don't eat, Amy. Yeah. But you know what? We're going to educate ourselves more. As you can tell, we don't know that much. So we're bringing in the experts. So we're going to have a guest co-host here. But first, let's find out who it is. Hi, this is Maher Kabi. I'm an independent board member at Sitka Group of Companies. I can't wait to see you shortly. Yes, Maha will join us right here in just a little bit. But first, keeping up with all that's buzzing in Dubai on the Food Festival, I head down to Dubai's first and only Indian vegetarian fine dining experience, Awatara, to speak to the chef behind the concept and try some of their incredible dishes. Let's take a look. In India, we have a ritual where we always call the guest is our god. In Hindi, it's known as Atiti Deva Bhava. So I always tell my team that don't forget our day one service when we open the Aftara because on that time we don't have any Michelin, we don't have any other recognition. We have only this restaurant, we have only beautiful guests and we have to take care of them. I'm going to meet with Chef Rahul who with his team is creating dishes that redefine vegetarian cuisine. So this is our first course. Yes. It's known as Navedya. Mm -hmm. So Navedya means offering to the God. Based on that ritual, we are offering you the first course, which is made with the freshly churned butter. And you can see there is lots of flour on the top. Yeah. So when, whenever we offer something to the god, uh, the flour always play a very vital role. Mm. I wasn't expecting it to explode. Mm. Yeah. And the crackling. Yes. Oh, can you hear that? <laughs> that is amazing. That is like literally an explosion of flavors yes. in my mouth. Like you, you can actually feel saffron, you can feel, you can uh, feel oranges you can taste and vanilla, it. everything is coming together. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah. I love that. So the next course which is coming, it's coming from my hometown. And then we are using a specific lentil. It has too much protein. And uh, we have paired that uh, lentil curry with a ragi bread. It's again a millet. And that is commonly found in my hometown. With some accompaniment, you can see on the table that mm -hmm. is uh, tomato and sesame chutney and the pomelo salad. Fantastic. We call this entire meal as a farmer meal. Mm -hmm. So this is bitter god. Okay. People don't want to eat bitter god because of its bitter nature. Okay. I would say 90% of people, they really don't want to eat, but the 10% people, they love it. Okay. There's so much health benefit of this bitter god as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, this bitter god, we have paired with the ghee roast spice. It is going to be a bit spicy. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, paired it along with the sambhar gelato, which is flavored with raw mango. Okay, amazing. And you can see the flower shaped tui, that yeah. is dosa. Your food is mind-blowing not just visually but in flavor presentation everything can you tell me a little bit about your journey to getting the on michelin star so in 2022 we opened uh, aftara first march and uh, same month on i think on 27 march michelin announced that they are coming to dubai mm -hmm. so i was on that assumption like uh, we are very new so michelin will not come to us and they will go to other restaurants but 
within two months we received the email from the Michelin that you are also a part of the guide and uh, in first uh, uh, year of Michelin 2022 we were in the guide and then in 23 we received this star so now people have more expectation from us mm -hmm. and we have to do better and better and better each and every day wow look at this Well, I have had an absolutely amazing time here at Awatara exploring some of the incredible dishes and Chef Rahul is really debunking all of the stereotypes that go around vegetarian cuisine, really defining what is out there and what is available. Now today I've just tried a few of the amazing dishes, but there are 15 incredible dishes on the menu, so I'm going to go back and try a few more. Amy, you really do get all the good gigs. But back to investing, and we're very excited to welcome our guest co-host in the studio, a visionary who is defining business opportunities in the Middle East through his commitment to innovation and finance. Please join us in welcoming to DXB today, Maher al Kabi, who is an independent board member with Al Sirkal. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, thank you very much, likewise. Now, we were talking a little bit about impact investing. Why is it so important? Uh, first, let's define it, at least for, for us all of us to be aligned and understand it. It has to sit all the three verticals, which is social. I heard you overheard you saying about social a little bit, which is very, very important, all of you. And then also environment, which is also crucially very important. But at the same time, we need to make sure that it is creating an economic value. Because a lot of people believe that when you do a social impact investment, probably you're not going to make money out of it. On the contrary, you have to make money in order for it to be sustainable, and then you do it. So there's have been a, a good trends going on in UAE to do a social impact investment. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and we have spoken to people on the show before who do things, as you say, that might be considered, you know, a CSR, not really something you is, that's going to make you money. But it's not true. In fact, when the environment's better, we're all happier, productivity goes up. Uh, what other examples uh, are the benefits of impact investment? If you look at today UAE landscape in terms of preserving the environment, one of the kind of Im immediate trends that we're looking at is how do we make sure we're environmentally friendly? We all talk about gases, which is going up on the air quite a lot, which is kind of heating up the environment. So UAE is being in stride in terms of investment when it comes to renewable energies. Uh, Masdar is a company that we all heard about being there for about 16 years. They've got active projects as we speak today and actively been investing globally, over 40 projects. And we're talking about $40 billion over there being invested. So there's a lot happening over there when it comes to renewable energy. When it comes to housing and social and creating workforce for the new generation, how do we bring in the digital economy to infuse that development where sustainability can actually can take, a, take a lead as well? Mm. Uh, Maher, I want to talk about the scope of the UAE when it comes to impact investment. It has grown tenfold in the last couple of years. Uh, talk to me about that transformation because is it now people are realizing how important it is to actually work with from the ground up with you know small businesses and actually build the foundation with them from the get-go? Sure. Uh, the ecosystem of building startups and SMEs have started very long ago, since 1982 with Khalifa Fund. Mm -hmm. And also we all know about Dubai SME has been there. It's only got the name changed. So it's very important imperative that we work with these startup companies who are coming up with innovative ideas which are fueling the development of the economy. Now we all started, we hold about Dubai being one of the smartest cities and that's the aspiration. And we had 3X and 10X and 10X and now we have D33. And today also further announcement happened, how do we further be made the development of the economy? Is Hanis uh, Sheikh Hamdan al Rashid also led that yesterday? And he talked about how do we increase the investment? How do we increase the era that we have today over here? How do we also make sure that whatever we do are sustainable? So there was a KPI being launched. How can we reduce the carbon emission by 30%? But who's going to be doing this thing in collaboration with the private sectors? Mm -hmm. So whatever we do today, even the policies we issue, we, I also happen to sit as a chair, uh, part of the Dubai uh, UAE Circle Economy Council. We work very hand in hand with, co uh, with corporates and private sectors. Faris and myself, we didn't even know that we were impact investors until we actually sat down and let, looked at this subject. How would you uh, recommend somebody getting involved into being an impact investor and on different scopes, so whether you're a company or whether you're an individual? This is an excellent question because that's a challenge, by the way. We need to find who are really offering those investment funds today. 
and we need to be very careful. So as a, a soul yourself, it will be very difficult to find out. So you need to associate yourself with a company where they have a track record, where they'll tell you where they're investing. Mm -hmm. So it only then you can go and participate on this fund. But for you to go find out yourself, sometimes gonna be a bit challenging. So it's very important that you work with banks, investment houses, who will actually direct you and tell you, these are the actually accredited investment, impact investment funds that are available, and this is where they're gonna be investing in, and this is the impact they've created in the past. So then you are actually aware, you're, you're really making an impact in the environment of the year as well. And speaking of which, I'm actually very interested to know what industries and what sectors are seeing the biggest growth when it comes to impact investing, because surely there's some more than others that are interested 100%. in that kind of thing. The two key ones, and I keep on saying globally, if you look at the trends now, the two key trends globally going on, one is digital economy, for which now UAE have launched the agenda in 2022 by Minister of uh, Economy, and the circle economy. And both are trending very well. And the digital economy will actually fuel the development of circle economy. Now, digital economy, anything to do with the AI, digital twins, IOTs, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and, and circle economy, anything to do with environmental related matter like sustainability, renewable energy. How do we make sure what do we come off from a linear economy to a circular economy? So these are the two key trends actually taking strides and UAE is in the forefront leading that. And I think COP28 was a, a good testimony, what we have delivered, what we have done. Lots of project has been announced and a lot of showcase has happened, happened as well. But all has worked with collaborating with so many government, so many countries and so many companies that we're working with them. Meher, thank you. I feel so educated already. And I feel like now we have more guests joining us who are going to tell us a lot more about the space here in the UAE. So we hope you will stay with us. Uh, but for now, coming up, we find out how venture capital firms can help take your company to the next level with the team at Global Ventures. So stay with us.